evening. Tonight we're going to look at the, the idea of enduring as Christians. Now, one time I can remember someone really enduring was the last time me, my grandfather, and Mr. Dwayne went night fishing. Now, I ended up catching four, and a couple of them were a good size too, and they, they didn't catch anything. Now, it was really impressive because through the pain of watching me catch all these fish, they were able to endure and continue fishing. And you could tell when I was holding up my fish and my grandpa was taking my picture, you could tell by the expression that they were trying really hard to act like they were happy for me. But on a more serious note, we're going to talk about enduring as Christians tonight. And we're going to talk about two things that I believe are important for us to endure. And then we're going to look briefly at why we should endure at the end of this lesson. So first off, I want to talk about enduring temptation. Now, everyone has dealt with temptation at some time or another. And that's, that's just part of being a human. Now, a good example of someone who endured during temptation is Job. You know, he was, he was put to the test. He, he went through so much suffering that he was tempted just to give up on God. His wife even told him he should just curse God and die. But instead, he endured and continued on. Turn to James chapter 5 and verse 11. And here we read about how Job was able to endure through his temptation. James 5 verse 11 Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Now, the definition of the word steadfast is to be firmly fixed in faith or devotion to duty. And Joseph, was folk, he had his eyes fixed on the Lord, and he had his eyes fixed on his duty. And that's how he was able to overcome his temptation. And when we, this verse also tells us that when we have our eyes firmly fixed on what, on God and on our duty, that's when we start to see our Lord's mercy and his compassion and his purpose in our lives. Now secondly, I want to talk about enduring persecution. And persecution has been going on as long as the church has existed. And it's just simply part of being a Christian. Christ is a, a perfect example of enduring persecution. Turn to 1 Peter 2, verse 21. And here we see this idea of Christ being our example of enduring persecution. 1 Peter 2, 21. For this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. If we follow in the steps of Christ when he, when he was persecuted, we'll be able to overcome persecution as well. Now look up at verse uh, 19 of 1 uh, Peter chapter 2. Verse 19. For this is a gracious thing when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. Verse 20. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. And other translations tell us that this finds favor in the eyes of God. So God, God is pleased with us when we endure persecution for him. And back in verse 21, it says that Christ suffered for us. Christ suffered for us while he was on this earth, and he showed us an example of how to endure persecution. And now we suffer for him to show the world his glory. Now finally, I'd like to look at why we endure. And there, there are probably many answers to this, que this question, but to me, it all comes back to love. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to look at verse 7 of chapter 13. And 1 Corinthians is all about love and how we treat one another. 
And it, it's also in reference, though, to God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. First, uh, First Corinthians 13, verse 7. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. If we truly love Christ in our heart, we're going to endure temptation, we're going to endure persecution, we're going to endure anything that Satan throws at us. And so tonight, I want you to ask yourself, do you really love Jesus? Or are you just someone who comes to church on Sunday and does whatever they want the rest of the week? Maybe tonight, um, Maybe tonight you'd like to come forward and ask for prayers. If, th if this is your case, maybe you'd like to come forward and ask for prayers. I know that there are many members in this congregation who would like to pray for you and encourage you. Or maybe you haven't, you haven't joined um, the walk of endurance that Christ calls us to live. And you'd like to tonight by putting on your Lord in baptism. Whatever your need is, please come forward as we stand and as we sing.